magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I'm so excited to be here this morning. Good morning to all of you streaming live. I pray all is well. First, give an honor to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and to my pastor, Reverend Brian R. Thompson, and to my first lady, Reverend Felica R. Thompson. Thank you both for this wonderful opportunity to come and share God's word this morning. And for all the fabulous mothers out there and those who stepped up as mothers, happy Mother's Day to each and every one of you. And may God continue to bless you as you continue to hold it down. My scripture will be coming from Romans 8, beginning at verses 31 through 35 and then verses 37 through 39. Hear the word of God. What can we say about all of this? If God is for us, who can be against us? God did not spare his own son, but handed over to death for all of us. He will also give us everything along with him. Who will accuse those whom God has chose? God has approved them. Who will condemn them? God has died, and more importantly, he was brought back to life. Christ is in the honored position, the one next to the Father on the heavenly throne. Christ also intercedes for us. What would separate us from the love Christ has for us? Can trouble, distress, persecution, hunger, nakedness, danger, or violent death separate us from the love? The one who loves us give us an overwhelming victory in all these difficulties. I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love, which Christ Jesus, our Lord, shows us. We can't be separated by death or life, by angels or rulers, by anything in the present or anything in the future, by forces or powers in the world above or in the world below, or by anything else in creation. Let us pray. Kind Father, in the name of Jesus, let the words of my mouth and this meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. I would like to lift for a subject, certain during uncertain times. Who would have thought in 2020, we will be dealing with something called the coronavirus. Though first starting way over in Wuhan, China, this virus has managed to turn the entire world upside down, paralyzing everything, no movement, shutting it down. The World Health Organization, also known as WHO, proposed an official name for the disease as COVID-19 and declared a global health emergency, a pandemic. This virus has sickened more than 3.5 million people and at least 250,000 people have died from it in a matter of months that we know of. Along with this uncertainty before us, we've all have heard about or experienced people or family members not just dying, but having to die alone. Unemployment rates sky high and having to be isolated, unable to see family, friends, all of which has taken a great toll on the mental state of so many. So here we all are asking the same question, what in the world is going on? This is crazy. We've never experienced anything like it. Sadly, if we have not realized it by now, nobody knows anything for certain about this virus. Information changing every day. 
And as a registered nurse, I can attest to the processes having to be changed every day in effort to help protect and save lives from something we have never heard or seen before. What we initially thought were the presenting symptoms have changed. We have people carrying the virus without any symptoms. Nobody is exempt. This virus is affecting both healthy and those with chronic health conditions. We have scientists working around the clock to find the right cure. Listen, we might, know, we might not know what we're dealing with, but I know a man who does. Who can put the whole world at a standstill? Only God can allow this. If, there's, if there was ever a time to make up your mind and be certain about your spiritual position, the time is right now, right. today. Matthew 24 and 36 says, no one knows, however, when the day and hour will come, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, the Father alone knows. In our text, Paul asks a relevant question that deals with our spiritual position as it relates to the condition of our world today. What can we say about all this? If God is for us, who can be against us? Is your viewpoint from a spiritual perspective of all the things currently around, happening around us, or are you looking at things from the view of the world? Mm -hmm. Remember Job, a righteous man of God who literally lost everything, yet still trusted God. He didn't let the things going on around him cause him to lay down his faith in God because he was certain of his relationship with God and his promises. If by chance your view is blurred by the things of this world, I pose a question to you. Is God with you? Not sure? Well, I've come today with three things you might want to be certain of. All right. The first thing is, be certain of who's with you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. One thing I can be certain is that everybody is not for me, but I ain't mad. As for you, I pray you're not that gullible to believe that everyone is with you either. All right. Look, time out for games, y'all. We are living in a time when we need to know who, when we need to know who is with us. Because even Jesus had someone in his circle who claimed to be with him but ended up betraying him. All right. Listen, if you don't have Jesus with you, you can't be certain about anything. All right. Complete certainty can only come from the salvation of Jesus Christ by faith. Uh -huh. How could you not want to be certain of the one who did not spare his own son but gave up for you is with you? Mm -hmm. If you weren't certain of who's with you, if I were you, I would make certain that I did today. For Romans 10, 9 through 11, if you confess your mouth, Lord Jesus Christ, as your Lord, right. and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ was raised from the dead, you will be saved. Yeah. For it is, your, it is with your heart that you believe and are justified. And it is with your mouth that you confess your faith and are saved. If you believe in him, you will never be put to shame. Mm -hmm. And you can be certain of that. Understand something, if you do what Romans 10, 9, and 10 instructs you to do, then uncertainty about anything, including this coronavirus, should no longer be a concern of yours. Because Paul said, if God is for us, who can be against us? Right. right now, you might be saying, well, this COVID-19 is against us. And it may be very well. It may be well so. But Paul is asking here, who or what is more powerful than God? Just like the wind and the waves obey Jesus, I believe this virus will also. God has all power in his hand. Uh -huh. This virus has not taken God by surprise. Everything in heaven and on earth are subject to God's will. All right. Once you are certain of who's with you, you can be certain that you are loved. My second point, a certain kind of love. God has much love for his children. You can't buy this kind of love, right. nor find it just anywhere. All right. Because all we know, because we all know that people will love us today and hate us tomorrow. All right. 
A relationship with Jesus is like no other relationship that you're going to ever have. Mm -hmm. God has a unique kind of love for you. You see, God is love. And love is a fundamental essence in his nature and character. Mm -hmm. His very being. God is perfect in love. God loves you because he loves you. Now, I know that, I know those of us that are mothers say, yes, we have unconditional love for our children, but Jesus takes unconditional love to another level. Yes, yes. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only, one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Yes. Paul said, who said, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble, shall hardship, persecution, famine, nakedness, or danger, or sword? Neither death, nor life, neither angels, nor demons, neither the present, nor the future, nor any powers, neither height, nor death, or anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Did you hear me? Nothing can separate you from his love. All right. Believe it and rejoice in it. I don't know about you, but I need that kind of love. Yeah. Now that we know we're certain of who's with us and we're certainly loved, my third point is you're certainly more than a conqueror. A conqueror is one who conquers, one who gains a victory, one who subdues and brings into subjection or possession by force or influence. Now, I need you to get this way down in your spirit. You might say, well, I don't feel like a conqueror. Well, guess what? I didn't ask you what you felt like right. because your feelings don't trump the truth. Uh -huh. It's not about what you did or didn't do. All right. You're more than a conqueror because of what Jesus did. Yeah. Jesus conquered death, yes. hell, and the grave. Yes. Right. And the living one, I died, and behold, I am alive forevermore. All right. And I have the keys to death and Hades. First yes. Corinthians 15 and 55 says, Oh, death, uh -huh. where is your victory? Yes. Oh, death, uh -huh. where is your sting? Right. And because of Jesus' resurrection, all threats against us are controlled. You see, Paul is encouraging us to stand firm in our faith during this time of uncertainty, in spite of, by reminding us that not only do we have victory in the end, but by faith in Jesus Christ, but Jesus has empowered us to be victorious right now. Right. He has already told us we have a father who fights for us. So remain certain that nothing can happen to us unless he permits it. And if he does allow it, even then, still, on, we, we win on his promises of eternal life. Yeah. We can't lose. Uh -huh. We win. 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 Yeah. As Christians, we are completely victorious. Yeah. Amen? Amen. So, as, so as you go about your day today uh -huh. and each day forward, I remind and challenge you to walk in the authority and the certainty that Jesus Christ has given us. Yes. We are free yes. from judgment because Jesus died for us. Uh -huh. Don't be moved by what you see on TV right. or what's going on around you. Uh -huh. We are free from fear because Jesus Christ intercedes for us and we can't be separated from his love. With God in control, we are free from defeat because the Holy Spirit lives on the inside of us. And you can be certain of all these things, even in this pandemic, that you are more than a conqueror. God bless you. Amen. We thank God for that awesome word. We thank you, Reverend Pinkett. We thank you for the Lord Jesus giving her that word for us. And I didn't know she could sing. We went. We win. Amen. Awesome word for times like this, a relevant word for times like this, an encouragement for the body of Christ as well as to mothers and all of us who love his appearing. We thank God for this word. The word has gone forth. 
Now it's time for the affirmation. If there's someone, after the call has been made, wants to give your life to Christ today, understanding that nothing shall separate you from the love of God, and knowing this, you need to be born again. So if you are out there and you want to be born again, you don't have to say, you know, in your spirit, I'll wait till the church opens back. I'll wait till we have drive-in service again so I can be there. Let me tell you, tomorrow's not promised to any of us. During this season and time, it's shown us one thing. You can be here today and gone tomorrow. So it would behoove you to get your life right with God. So if you felt the pricking of your spirit, your heart, just then during that sermon, and the spirit of the Lord was working on you and saying, you need to get saved. And she already mentioned in Romans 10, 9 and 10, if thou shalt confess in thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in thy heart that Jesus Christ has been raised from the dead, then thou art saved. If you believe that and you're willing to and ready to repent of your sins, God will save you right now. The Lord Jesus Christ will intercede on your behalf, for he died and he rose with all power in his hand, which gave us the right to be able to be born again. So if you want to be saved, I invite you to ask Jesus to come into your heart wherever you are. If you're in your living room, if you're in your bedroom, if you are on the porch, if you are in the car, you can receive Jesus right now. And if you received him, we want you to just call us and let us know that. This praise team is going to sing one verse of a song. Yeah. Trust me. And this is for those who are still thinking about getting saved. You're sitting there saying, I need to get my life right. Not because of Corona. But Corona may have been the thing that let you know that life is so precious. But the life in Christ is more precious than the life on earth. Eternal life will always beat out the life that you have on this earth. Because if you just deal with the life you have on this earth, you'll be here today, gone tomorrow. And there's no life after this. Not a life of Christ. But when you receive Christ into your life, it gives you life eternal with Jesus Christ. But there's no more pain, there's no more suffering. So if you want to give your life to Christ and you gave your life to Christ, call us at 910-867-1182, extension 5, right there on the bottom of your screen. And one of our ministers will be glad to be able to call you or answer you and pray with you. If you don't have a church home and want to join this church, we can tell you what it takes to be a member of this church. All you have to do is be somebody that's flawed, that's willing to be able to try to live righteous. And when you do that, understand we're righteous in all of our ways, but God is righteous all the time. We're unrighteous, but he is righteous. He is the righteous judge, and he will save us. So if you're here, you, if you're there, you want to be able to get saved or either join the church, you have the opportunity right now. And we prayed for you this morning. As you heard the prayer going forth, know that God cares for you. As Reverend Oliver said this morning, that God is our very present help. So we're praying for you. You pray for us. And God will get the glory out of our life. We're about to go. We're right on time. We're going to go into Sunday school at 10 o'clock. Please join us for Sunday. Go get you a cup of coffee. Come on back to your lazy boy, back to your bed. Some of you have found a way to be able to use your smart TV and put us on your screen, on your 70 inch. And we thank God, whether you're watching it on a two inch screen or whether you're watching on a 70 inch, know that you can get the word here. So we're going to go, we're gonna have, um, we're gonna have Sunday school at 10 o'clock and then join us back here at 11 o'clock. For we're going to have a word from God. My wife, the Reverend Felica Thompson will be preaching the word of God. And we thank God for the word that has gone forth by Reverend Pinkett, the word that will come forth in Sunday school. And then as we worship together, as my wife brings a word uh, at 11 o'clock, we look for a powerful move of God through this whole day. Now unto him that is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before his throne in glory with exceeding great joy. To our Father and our God, be glory, dominion, majesty, and power. Let the redeemed of the Lord sing together. <laughs>